So last week I did a video on the best weapon and specialist combos and it kind of sparked the idea for the best loadouts for each specialist. So that's what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to be doing this in a bit of a mini series and splitting each class into pretty much its own episode. And as I'm sure you guys can tell by the title today, we're covering the assault class. I'll pretty much do one loadout for each of the specialists in each class. And then obviously in total, there will be four different videos, each covering their own class. So without wasting any time, let's get stuck right into it. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that obviously this is just my opinion and I'm hardly a master at each of these specialists. So just keep that in mind. There's no such thing as the objective best loadout. This is just my own opinion for what I think is the best loadout for each of these specialists. Now, starting off with Dozer, for me, I run the M5A3 with Dozer. The loadout for the M5A3 is the Fusion Hollow Sight, the Close Combat Rounds, the LWG Grip and the Shortened Barrel. For me, this is probably the best M5A3 setup. It's something I've been running almost exclusively since launch when it comes to the M5A3. It makes it feel like a bit of an SMG up close, yet it still has a really good range. Now, for his secondary weapon, I use the PF51 just for a bit of extra ammo because obviously the M5A3 doesn't have a very high ammo count, especially when you're using the close combat rounds. I then also use the IBA armor plates to make him even more tanky than he already is. And then lastly, I use the concussion grenades for pretty much being able to run into a room and have a little bit less of a, I guess, chaos because you can kind of throw that in there, stun those enemies and they don't really know what's going on. And then you can run in with your shield and you're probably a bit less likely to get shot in the back when you do that. Now, this loadout is pretty much designed to make Dozer as tanky as he can be with the armor plates, the med pen, and obviously his shield. Like I just mentioned, you want to make sure you're making the most of those concussion grenades. If you need to charge into a room and you know that there are a bunch of enemies in there, it's always a good idea to chuck in a concussion grenade and then actually equip the shield and sprint in, at which point you can hopefully pick off a few enemies a little bit easier because like I said, if there's say three or four enemies that are in there, if you run towards one of them, well, the other ones are just going to run to your side and shoot you in the back. So a concussion grenade, although they don't really do all that much at the end of the day, they mostly just cause a little bit of chaos and it can help you out in those situations. I won't lie, Dozer is a little bit broken and I actually just put a video up on that if you guys want to see why I think that. I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I obviously couldn't exclude him from the video. So if you guys do enjoy playing Dozer, hopefully this loadout works for you. Now, next up, we have my own personal favorite in McKay. And the loadout that I run for McKay is the AK-24 and the attachments for that are the Fusion Hollow, the Drum Mag, the LWG grip and the tactical compensator. This weapon is really, really good at sort of mid to long range. And especially when you're making the most of his grapple, getting into some really good spots, you can absolutely take advantage of that. I then run the shoddy as a secondary for up close because obviously the AK-24, it can do okay up close, but it's definitely not as good as any SMGs or even some of the other assault rifles. So the shoddy is kind of just a bit of cover for if someone's pushing you. I then also like to bring along the C5s to try and help take out vehicles. Without that, I feel like McKay is a little bit useless other than just getting kills. And so I do like to try and contribute to the team in one way or another. So trying to take out vehicles is definitely something that will help. And with that grapple and just getting into the right spot, you can definitely be very, very effective at taking out vehicles. I then also like to run the incendiary grenades for McKay, mostly because you can get to those high spots. The incendiary grenades are kind of hard if you just need to like throw them on sort of an even playing field. But if you're up high and you can throw them a bit more down at your enemies, if that makes sense, it just makes them a little bit more accurate and you kind of get that flame to be where you actually want it to go. Like I said, with McKay, you definitely want to make the most of his grapple to get to some really good locations on the map. Having a good vantage point with a bit of cover and even a bit of height over your enemies will definitely make the AK-24 even better than it already is. And like I said as well, you can definitely make the most of the grapple to help take out vehicles. You can actually hook onto vehicles if you guys didn't know. So if there's one that's like running away from you, you can kind of pull out your C5 and then pull out your grapple, grapple onto the vehicle. And then when you get close enough, you can throw the C5 and blow it up. So he is actually really useful at taking out vehicles as well as just kind of getting onto a rooftop. And then if one's driving past, for example, you can take it out as well. Now, moving on, we have Sundance, who is also probably my next favorite specialist in the game. These two are some of the ones that I've made pretty much since launch. And Sundance has a very, very fun play style. The loadout that I generally run for Sundance is the PP29. Now, I did say in the previous video that I used the PBX45. It kind of just switches between them. They're both really good. And obviously, as goes for every single loadout in this video, they're all personal preference. So obviously, you can change the weapon as you guys please. The loadout that I run for the PP29 is the Fusion Hollow, the standard issue mag, the tactical compensator, and then obviously no underbarrel as there are no options for that. Once again, I do run the shoddy for the secondary and then same as McKay, I also use the C5. This is even better with Sundance than McKay because obviously you can get to some really, really crazy spots and pretty much just fly down, landing right on top of a vehicle, put some C5 on it and blow it up. So you can essentially one-shot vehicles if you play properly with Sundance. And on 
honestly, I don't ever, ever change that up. I literally use C5 every single time I'm playing as Sundance. As for the grenades, I run the mini grenades. And the reason for that is that she obviously already has the scatter grenade. And so by equipping the mini grenades, you get three of those plus the scatter grenade, meaning you can actually have a total of four. And this kind of makes her the explosives expert. You can have a total of four grenades, like I said, plus the three C5s. And that makes it so that you can pretty much spam explosives almost the entire time you're alive. Obviously, the scatter grenade will respawn or I guess restock over time. And so, yeah, Sundance is definitely the explosives expert. She can be a little bit tough to play if you haven't played Sundance all that much. But with a bit of playtime, you guys definitely become adept at taking out those vehicles. Now, obviously, the assault class gets their weapon proficiency from the assault rifles and obviously using an SMG for Sundance. It means you're not going to get the weapon proficiency, which is essentially just the extra ammo. Whenever you can, you want to try and get those proficiencies. But personally, I just prefer an SMG for Sundance just because I do play very, very aggressive when I'm playing as Sundance. But like I said, you can obviously switch that out. Something like the M5A3 build that I mentioned for Dozer is just as good for Sundance and you obviously get that proficiency as well. Now, lastly, we have Zane. I honestly think Zane is very, very slept on in this game. And this is the loadout that I run for him. So I've got the ACWR and the attachments are the Fusion Hollow, the Extended Mag, the Cobra Grip and the Factory Barrel. This one is really good for those sort of mid-range engagements, which I personally think is where Zane excels due to his trait and obviously his ability as well. I once again run the shoddy. That is obviously just personal preference. If you don't like the shotgun, you can use any other secondary pretty much. I then run the Explosive Launcher, which pretty much just makes him the Grenade Launcher Expert because obviously he has got the Air Burst Launcher as well. And then lastly, I use the Mini Grenades again because this pretty much just allows you to have as many explosives as possible with any character in the game. You'll get essentially unlimited with the Air Burst Rifle. You'll then get, I think, a total of four with the Explosive Launcher and then three grenades on top of that. Like I said, I think Zane is really underrated. His trait makes him absolutely elite at survivability if you play your cards right. So getting into areas with lots of good cover, even if there are multiple enemies pushing you, if you take one out and you have taken a bit of damage, you will start to heal up quicker, jump behind cover real quick, move to a different position and take the others out. He is really, really good at surviving in those situations. He's also very good at pushing objectives because like I said, with the air burst launcher, the explosive launcher and those mini grenades, you can pretty much just spam explosives on an objective and help you and your teammates get into those close quarters areas. So although he's really good at those sort of mid-range engagements, he can be really, really good at pushing into objectives as well. So anyway, that is pretty much it for the loadouts that I've run for the assault class. I'm keen to hear your own loadouts below. Obviously, everyone's going to have their own opinions. So be sure to leave your own recommendations for these loadouts down below. And be sure to stay tuned because I will be covering the engineer loadouts up next. Thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day and I'll see you all out there on the battlefield.